Some stadiums are simply buildings. Others seem to live and breathe. This one, similar to Churchill Downs or Wrigley Field, rises up out of a residential neighborhood. For over 100 years, this has been the most famous racetrack in the world. And for the last 23 years, NASCAR has been a part of the tradition. Speaking of tradition, there is nothing like this one. A win here can make a career, and you seal it with a kiss. Welcome to NASCAR Countdown to Green, presented by Sonic, as we get ready to go racing. Indianapolis Motor Speedway, massive in size, historic in stature. While its history is steeped in open wheel racing, once a year, names like Earnhardt, Harvick, Johnson, and Elliott take their shot. A one-yard strip of the original bricks that covered this track still here. Fans walk across them. They touch them. We are sitting right on top of them. Hello and welcome to the Brickyard. Chris Devota alongside two drivers who were in that first NASCAR race here, Kyle Petty and two-time Brickyard winner Dale Jarrett. No question, this place is special. Indian summer is also hot. Let's see what's heating up our menu on Sonic. Kyle Busch is chasing history. He can become the first driver to win three consecutive Brickyard 400s. So far, so good. He's on the pole. His Joe Gibbs Racing team won last week at New Hampshire, continuing a remarkable streak. The last eight Monster Energy Series races have been won by eight different drivers and teams. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. starts 13th in his final Brickyard as a full-time driver. He needs a win to make the playoffs. Can it happen here? He is with our Dave Burns. So for Dale Earnhardt Jr., it's another one of those finals. Your final Brickyard 400 today. What are the emotions? Brace ready, man. Just got to get in there and try to do the best job I can today. Um, just like another race, you know, you, you want to do well and uh, you, a, lot of, a lot of anxiety and nerves and tension building uh, to go out there and, and try to get the job done. Crew's here and they're ready and brought a great car. We've had good speed, so it's just another job. So let's see what we can do today. 16 so far for Junior here at Indy. Hopefully 17 is a charm. Well, Kyle Busch certainly kind enough to sign some autographs for the fans here at Indianapolis and certainly knows the numbers also coming into this race. But, Kyle, everyone in the garage area says you're the car to beat this afternoon. How much sure is the confidence bolstered at a racetrack where you're already confident by the speed you've had in the race car this weekend? Uh, it's obviously a good thing, you know. Certainly you got to have a fast car first off, and then you got to be able to make the right decisions and be in the right place at the right time at the end of this thing. But, uh, Guys have done a great job with a with a really fast Skittles Camry, so I'm excited about today. And starting up front obviously helps those things out a little bit. And uh, you know we certainly look forward to what we can have and what our chances are for today and being able to go for three. All right, Kyle, mentioning that he would love to get the three peat here at Indianapolis. Thanks, Marty. One chasing history, another chasing a bit of family history. And what a scene. I mean, we talked about how special this is. What about the emotions and what about the chance for Kyle? Well, I think that it probably he comes in here as the favorite. Uh, there's no doubt. I mean, he's won the, the two previous races here. His car was fast all weekend. He's on the ball. So uh, a lot of good things happening there. As I look at those, the, the two drivers, who needs a victory more? You know, I think Kyle Busch is probably going to make the playoffs easily. Uh, Dale Jr. is needing a victory at some point in time. And when you look at your, you know, he says it's just another race that he wants. Well, this isn't just another racetrack because you get one chance at the most historic racetrack in the world. And, and you would like to go end your career with a victory at this place. So I would think that a little more pressure's on him, but certainly there's a lot of pressure in trying to make it three in a row for Kyle Busch. Yeah, I think there is pressure, and I think he can do that. Um, even though he's not won a race, this team does have the speed. We heard him say that. What I took from those two interviews is one driver, Kyle Busch, seems to be calm, cool, collected. He knows what he has to do. He knows what his job is today. And we heard Junior say uh, that it's just another race, that he's race ready. It's just another race. But then we heard him mention the words anxiety and nervous. Yeah. So this is his last ending. There is a little bit more. There's more eyes on him. There's probably a little bit more pressure to chase that family history than there is to chase that racetrack history because he wants to go out of here with that trophy and put his name on that list beside his dad's and Dale Jarrett here. Yeah, the points, the playoffs on the line, but this one so much more. It, like we said, it's not just a race. It's a chance to make a dream come true. We talked about the fact it's called the Brickyard. We showed you that one-yard strip of bricks that still remain. But what about the history? One of the greatest traditions in racing, the kissing of the bricks. Coming up next, our Rutledge Wood will give us a history lesson on what makes them so special. 
Halloween is brought to you by Sonic. This is how you Sonic. Let's get it, America. From the author behind True Blood, Charmaine Harris's Midnight Texas premieres Monday. Work is over, school is out, and the wild ones come out to play. The green flag is out. Pups get a chance to dance with the big dogs. Oh, they're going at it. Roars from engines. Compete with roars of fame. And the stadium lights become a spotlight for war. Here he is, Johnny Sauter. It's truck season, America. Countdown to Green is brought to you by Sonic. This is how you Sonic. I think just the heritage of race cars around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is what it's all about. And us being fortunate enough to be on that surface with the rest of the, the people that have won these big races over the years is really, really fun for us. The amount of history at this racetrack, the amount of talent that's come through the gates here, um, it's just an honor to be able to stand in victory lane and, and then uh, get to kiss that yard of bricks. It's the greatest racetrack in the world. It's the most historic racetrack in the world. And uh, you always get goosebumps driving through that tunnel. The Daytona 500 is very, very special. But it's, it's much more of the circumstances that happen around you that help you win that race. Here, it is much more the, the individual team and driver's efforts that win. Um, so it's more difficult to win here. Um, and you take a lot of pride in winning this major that way. One of the unique views here at Indy, the way fans line both sides of the front stretch. Let's send it now to Steve Sands, who moments ago spoke with the Open Championship winner, Jordan Spieth. All right, thank you. We are with the champion golfer of the year, Jordan Spieth. Jordan, how would you explain just how difficult it was for you to win today? <laughs> um, more difficult than it probably even looked, and it probably looked pretty difficult. Boy, I mean, in past majors, when I've been in contention, I've started so strong. And then it's been about holding on to that kind of start. And this was just a, you know, completely flip switch where I start just horribly. And then all of a sudden, you're playing a, a new tournament and you've let, you know, a lot of the field back in and what could have been, you know, just a, a match. Uh, and, and that's what it turned into. We both played, um, you know, 13 or 14, 15 well. Uh, to kind of separate ourselves and make this a match play uh, match with three holes to go. And, uh, boy, I, I really don't know how we got the job done. I, I credit Michael a lot. Um, showed a, a lot of um, resilience myself to be able to um, get some of those putts to go in when I just didn't feel like it was working today. But uh, once they started to go, the roof was off and, and the can was huge. Let's go back to 13T. You blew your drive way yeah. right, and there was a shot of you putting your head in your hands. What was going on inside at that moment? Well, on that, on that shot, you're trying to miss the fairway to the right because if I hit the fairway, it's, it's most likely going to go in a bunker. And that's just an unusual circumstance. It hit a guy in the head and went on the other side of the mound that I didn't even know was there. But in the air, I'm like... You know, we're, it's a tie ball game, and you know I'm very confident about the way that I've prepared myself through 12 holes for the last six as a as a separate match, um, kind of a new tournament. But after I hit that tee ball, I'm sitting there going, man, you know, six. I, I was thinking I was making six, and took my time to figure out where the best location was when I very easily could have just gone back and reteed. Um, you know, I felt really bad about the amount of time that that took for someone, and especially in this situation with for Matt. And I went up and apologized and said, you know, hey, look, I was I was just trying to get to the location I thought was best for me to make the best score I could. I sincerely apologize for the amount of, of time this just took because he's sitting in the bag. You know, he's trying. I mean, it, it, there's nothing I could have done, and and he told me that, but it's still tough in that situation and. Uh, that five was massive. Uh, I was able to go in the driving range, be able to get it up near the green and make a five when I really, I would have been staring six or seven in the throat and out of the tournament. Congratulations on the win. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. You can watch continuing coverage on the Golf Channel. What a turnaround for Jordan Spieth making history. And let's take a history lesson now with Rutledge Wood as he continues his journey around America presented by Toyota. 
You know, Krista, this week my journey took me right here to the yard of bricks. You know, that's what we've known this place for, the brickyard. This place was paved with bricks, three and a half million of those in the year 1909. Now, after that, they started paving them, they started digging them up, and they needed a place to put them. Well, where else do you go but the closest creek? So Rick Allen and I decided to do a little Lewis and Clarking ourselves, you know, try to go find some. So that's what we did Friday morning, and we would do what anyone would do. You just simply roll up your jeans, take off your socks, and guess what you would find there in the creek at the golf course. That's right. We found one of the original Culver blocks. We got that patent in 1901. Three and a half million of these bricks surrounded the place, and we were lucky enough to find one, Krista. Got our own little piece of history. To think of all the cars that raced on this, the people that put it together that paved it, and Rick Allen and I, we weren't afraid of getting a little wet and finding a little history ourselves. I just love that we went from a guy who read a double break for an eagle putt to a guy who's standing oh. barefoot. <laughs> On Good a yard job. of bricks. Good that job, was for Dale Jared throwing that in. That, that was for DJ. <laughs> okay, so no <laughs> thanks. Yeah, great. Another shot of the feet. <laughs> All right, what about your picks for today? I mean, it's hard to handicap this. How do you do it? Yeah, so many things happen. The stage race is going to be different, but I'm going with the man that's had the best handling car all year long. I think this comes down to a long run at the end, and that's going to benefit Martin Truex in the 78. I believe he goes to victory lane at the Brickyard for the very first time, and we'll kiss the bricks later today. And, and, and great pick, the way Martin is run. But I'm going to go with we've had eight different teams win races over the last eight. I think this is our ninth different team that wins. It's the Penske organization, and they do it with Joey Logano. They yeah. put a car in victory lane finally, and get Penske to victory lane at Indy at the Brickyard 400. So neither one of you go with Kyle Busch, both picking a first-time Brickyard winner. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Rick Allen, Steve Letarte, and Jeff Burton will be coming up next. In the meantime, though, he sold millions of albums and is one of the biggest concert draws in America. Two days ago, he was in Wyoming. Today, he's here at the Brickyard with the world premiere of his amazing new Apple Music commercial here at the Brickyard, Brantley Gilbert. I love the feeling out of here. The f they have completed the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. Rick Allen with you from the most famous racetrack in the world, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And it's time now for free race ceremonies. We go trackside. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you, please rise and remove your hats as the Indiana National Guard Joint Services presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as the Reverend Howard Brammer offers today's invocation. Here at the racing capital of the world, we pause, O oh Lord, to invoke your blessing on this special event. Thank you for the privilege of living in America, a gift desired by many but acquired by only a few. Today the competition will be intense. May the camaraderie on the track and in the stands be displayed with light passion. As mechanical perfection and human endeavor merge, may the marvel of your creativity be seen. As the human spirit bonds with skill, speed, and technology, may safety prevail. And whether in the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat, enable us to treat both with grace and humility. As our nation again wades through turbulent waters, we pray again, God bless America. In Jesus' name, amen. With her breakthrough hit, every little thing, Rolling Stone, Sirius XN, CMT, and more have labeled the singer-songwriter an artist to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Big Machine Records' Carly Pierce for the singing of our national anthem. Oh. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam? Who's broad stripes and bright stars? fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave that our flag was still there oh say does that star 